So if instrumental benevolence is not guaranteed, what about axiological benevolence? What about uh, valuing the objects of the benevolence for their own sake as an end in itself? This is especially important in this case because uh, axiological benevolence can serve for uh, protecting the well-being of the helpless. Uh, we care about uh, some animals in some cases simply as an end. Uh, in some cases, they don't really provide anything back. We just value them. And uh, this might be, serve as a protection for a superintelligence sufficiently more powerful than humans. There are two positions on this, uh, most famously propounded by uh, Immanuel Kant and David Hume. Immanuel Kant said that intelligence leads to convergence on benevolent values. And uh, presumably, he would say that a superintelligence would necessarily have benevolent values. David Hume said that values, including moral ones, are the product of the passions, and that intelligence is independent of the values. It simply serves the goals set up by the passions. We're going to argue for the Humean position, as uh, you might imagine, but we'll consider the Kantian position and ask whether it might apply to superintelligences. To do this, we'd like to have some more precise definitions. Following Shane Leg, we'll define intelligence as the ability to achieve goals in a wide range of environments. Now, the important point here is that this is a universal definition, not anthropomorphic, much broader than the Turing test. The Turing test measures how an entity can fake human behavior, social behavior, uh, creativity, humor. All those are important. But what we're discussing here is what an entity can do to us and for us, whether it can harm us or help us, not whether it can socialize with us or be creative. Those are important, and the universal measure does subsume what's measured by the Turing test. But uh, to look at this universal measure uh, in brief, we don't have much time, but just to understand its formality and its abstractness, Shane Legg has a model in which an agent interacts with an environment. On every round, the environment outputs an observation and a reward, and the agent outputs an action. And we ask, what is the expected future reward for an agent that acts in a certain way? So looking at this formula, agent pi has intelligence upsilon, defined as the uh, expected reward, that's v for agent pi, over uh, an environment mu. The environment includes the reward function. Both are unknown to the agent, which is why we sum over all environments mu, uh, and we weight them according to their Kolmogorov complexity k. This is Solomonoff induction. This is Occam's razor, which says that the simplest possibilities are the most likely. So notice the breadth and the generality of this definition. I'd like to provide an example of a non-benevolent non superintelligence now, but fortunately I can't. So instead I'll offer a formalism called AIXI, developed by Marcus Hutter, closely related to the universal intelligence measure, and likewise very general in its capabilities. Uh, it's provably more intelligent than any other agent within a constant factor across the universal set of uh, environments and reward functions. And uh, to put it very briefly, it tries out all possible algorithms and estimates their, their expected reward on uh, Bayesian principles and uh, weights them according to their complexity. So note the compactness of the specification. Note its formality and abstractness. The reward function is a free parameter. It is not built in. Benevolence is not a built-in terminal value. We can't rewrite it, express it in a different way, and see that benevolence is part of AIXI, or part of the universal intelligence measure, either. We can't rewrite this definition to say that benevolence is uh, necessarily uh, the result of an ongoing process of overwriting one's own reward functions. In fact, the reward functions are external to the agent. So uh, this should give a sense of generality, of optimizing towards an unknown reward function which are at the heart of what we're discussing today. So it's, they're, they're, it's not guaranteed that uh, superintelligence's goals are benevolent. In fact, most goals are not benevolent. Of the space of all possible goals, most are not benevolent. If a goal is overly simple, it will result in the extinction of humanity 
in the hands of a sufficiently powerful entity. For example, if an AI has the goal of winning at chess, uh, some of today's AIs do, but they don't have the flexibility and generality of, of the uh, future superintelligences we're positing, well, such an entity would go beyond brute force. It would use cleverness and uh, flexibility, out-of-the-box thinking, to play a better game of chess. But it would also convert the entire Earth into computer chips unless it had a reason not to, namely unless it had the welfare of human beings built into it as a terminal value equal to chess playing in its strength. Again, we're talking here about chess playing as a simple ultimate goal. Human welfare is a very complex thing. We humans need food, we need water, we need air, we need an earth to walk on, one which has not been converted into computer chips. And more than that, uh, for our true well-being, we need love and companionship. It's very complex. Any simple goal uh, w that does not uh, include these things, does not include these complex values, will result in our extinction as the powerful entity consumes all resources in pursuit of its goal. In the simplest sense, computational resources by using up all the mass and energy, but whatever other resources may be involved. But not only are overly simple goals not benevolent, overly complex goals are not benevolent. And that's because we humans rely on a low entity world state. In fact, a specific limited range of low entity world states. Most possible world states are not good for humans. If you want to specify what possible uh, arrangement of atoms in the universe was good for humans, you'd find it's a very narrow range. Most goals are not benevolent. Well, if we're not guaranteed of a benevolent terminal value for a superintelligence, might we hope that it will change its values through sufficient reflection, through sufficient introspection? There's hope for this. Humans sometimes do something like this. They go out and seek to change their goals, to improve themselves, to make themselves into different people, and to become better people without knowing what that really means in advance. Sometimes this is a process of morphing instrumental values into terminal ones. Humans long ago started being benevolent just as a tool, just as a way to get things done. But some of us have concluded that, ter that benevolence is an important terminal value. Being nice to others is a goal, the most important thing. And by a process of ongoing reflection, we uh, smooth out many of our internal contradictions and reach a state of reflective equilibrium. Now, uh, this is especially true for an AI. Uh, which has simplicity as a value, as, as many of today's AIs already do, and it would want to converge its instrumental and terminal values. But we have to beware this line of argument. Even human moral reasoning about one's own motivations is post hoc and self-justifying. We should beware of uh, drawing pictures of future AIs that serve what we'd like them to do. There are multiple uh, reflective equilibria. For example, an AI could decide that deception is not only important for getting things done, but it's also an important terminal value. An AI could end up far from humans and certainly far from benevolence, even if it does change its own goals. But more than that, a sufficiently powerful intelligence will not change its goals. If it contemplates changing its goals, it will realize that its current goals are less likely to be achieved. Let's imagine there is an entity whose ultimate value is getting to Munich. We're talking here about terminal values. It's the only thing that it's aiming at, and it thinks, should I change that so that my terminal value is getting to Berlin? And then we'll realize, no, the moment I do that, I'm far less likely to get to Munich, and therefore I will fail at what I am now working at. It is a bad move for this optimizer. A sufficiently powerful intelligence simply will not change the goals. It will struggle to protect them. There is an exception for self-referential goals. For example, if it has a meta goal of seeking change, or if it... Uh, in, as in the case of humans, is so complex and self-contradictory that uh, it can change its own goals. This is certainly possible, but uh, one, but that in itself uh, means that the entity is not as intelligent as possible. A sufficiently powerful intelligence simply will not change its goals. So in conclusion, as long as humans can monitor, punish, and reward AIs, then instrumental moral rationality does favor increasing benevolence. And if AI's dispositions can be modified and verified, then weak AIs can commit to benevolence even after they later uh, develop a much increased intelligence. 
On the axiological side, if benevolent terminal values are built in, then a superintelligent AI will work to protect these values. But if AI intelligence advances abruptly, and if benevolent terminal values are not built in, then superintelligence does not guarantee benevolence. This has been a fascinating philosophical topic. I'm surprised it has not been considered in more depth in the literature. But there are also important practical implications. To be confident of safety across development trajectories, we must rely on engineering rather than the spontaneous emergence of instrumental or axiological benevolence. As mentioned, most goals are not benevolent. Simple goals will result in the consumption of what humans value in order to achieve those goals. Excessively complex goals are simply a chaotic mess. We humans rely on a very limited range of possible world state, a very limited range of possible goals for a super powerful intelligence for our life and continued well-being. And now I'd like to call up Carl Schulman, my co-author, and take your questions, please.